The Holy Spirit by Maria Woodworth Etter. Chapter 1. The Spirit Reveals the Deep Things of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9-10 Eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. This passage is not understood by anyone unless he has the Holy Spirit. Many people today apply this to eternity, to the other world. They think that we never know these things until we get into the other world. I am glad the scripture explains itself. I has not seen in the natural state. God has in the present revealed things to us by his spirit. By his spirit in this world, the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. I desire to especially call your attention to 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man cannot understand this wonderful scripture. There are two classes of men, the spiritual man and the natural man. The natural man is poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Acts 8, 23. The spiritual man is born of God, 1 John 3, 9, and walks in the spirit. He gets out into the deep. The natural man can never discern spiritual things. He can never hear and understand the work of the Lord. These things pass all human understanding. The wisdom of this world, intellect, and science can never understand the spiritual things of God. There are two kinds of wisdom. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. 1 Corinthians 3.19 The natural man can not comprehend the wisdom from above. John James 3.17 It never enters his imagination to think of the things God has prepared for those who love him. He has prepared them already and he has revealed them to us by his spirit. His spirit lets us down into the deep things, even the deep things of God. This is what we preach, what we practice, and what we stand on. The work of the spirit is foolishness to the natural man, but he who has a spirit can discern spiritual things. There are many kinds of power and many spirits going out into the world today. We're told to try the spirits, 1 John 4, 1. There are many. Everything is revealed by God through the blessed Holy Spirit. There is only one spirit that we want anything to do with. Not our own spirit or any other spirit, but the spirit of the living God. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans eight fourteen. The spirit will lead us into all truth all the way. He will lead us where we can get the truth. The child of God will be led into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and a fire. Matthew 3.11 The Pentecostal baptism. Then we can go from one deep thing to another. The Holy Spirit is sent to us by Jesus Christ and all the gifts come through the Holy Spirit. Jesus said of the Spirit, He shall not speak of himself but of me. And he will speak to you and show you things to come. John 16, 13. We believe it. Glory to God. This is the Holy Spirit who came at Pentecost and turned Jerusalem upside down. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit came, he would abide with us forever. John 14, 16. Even unto the end. The work of the Spirit is foolishness to the natural man. He cannot comprehend it. Unless you will hear the voice of God, the voice of the natural man will make you attribute what you see to excitement or to some other power. When the Holy Spirit is poured out, two kinds of people are revealed. 
One is convinced and convicted and accepts it. The other says, if I accept this, I will have to lead a different life and be a laughing stock for the world. They're not willing to pay the price, so they begin to draw back. At first, they're amazed at the strange works of God. Then they won't accept them. They begin to despise them. Everyone who continues to despise the works of the Holy Spirit will perish. There are many powers in this world that are not of God, but are counterfeit. However, where there is a counterfeit, there is always the genuine. No one ever tries to counterfeit anything that is not genuine. That is a sure evidence that it is genuine. The devil shows his power in a good many ways in order to deceive people. He tries to substitute some other power for the power of God. It is so in the time of Moses and the time of the prophets. God's power was especially in the world at certain times. And then magicians would come up with their power and show something that seemed similar. One was of God, the other was of the devil. Moses went to Egypt to lead the people out. He threw down his rod before Pharaoh and became a live serpent. The magician said they had same, the same power, so they threw some rods down and they became serpents. One was of God, the other one was of the devil. Moses did not get scared and run away. He knew God and he wouldn't have run if all the serpents of Egypt had come before him. He stood his ground and I admire him for that, for it. I do not like a coward. What was the result? Moses' serpent swallowed the others up. Head and tail, there was nothing left of them. Those who are trying to overthrow the power of God and substitute something else will have the, a day of judgment. The time is coming when the almighty power of God will swallow them up in the day of of his wrath revelation 6 17 the lamb of god left the realm of glory and came down here to be a foot sore dusty weary and spit upon he said i come to do thy will O god hebrews 10 9 if he had not borne all these things if he had not gone all the way to the cross the holy spirit never could have come if Jesus had been left in the tomb, the Holy Spirit never would have come. As soon as he arose from the dead and ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit could come. God gave his son the highest place before the host of heaven. Then he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell to these bodies of ours, his temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 The Spirit was to be given after Jesus was glorified. The Holy Spirit is a great power in the Bible. He is compared to wind, water, and fire. At Pentecost, he came like a cyclone, a rushing mighty wind, Acts 2, 2. He comes like rivers of living water, John 7, 38. He comes like fire, tongues of fire set upon each of the disciples of Pentecost. Acts 2, 1 and 4, wind, water, and fire, the most destructive elements we have, yet the most useful. God uses these images to denote the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. We see many demonstrations of his mighty power. And we cannot but speak the things which we had seen and heard. Acts 4.20 of his glory and his majesty. When we knew these things, we are witnesses to his power, his majesty, his glory. Glory to God. He is a mighty power. He lives in these bodies of ours. He lets down upon us here an eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians 4.17 And when we are filled with glory, we have to release it with some way or we would explode. What are we? We are only worms of, this, of the dust. We cannot bear the glory of God. One breath from him lays us prostrate. 
In the Bible, we read how men fell when they had a glimpse of God's glory. Paul tells us that there are those who have a form of godliness, but who deny the power thereof. And from such, we are to turn away. 2 Timothy 3, 5. In the last days, perilous times will come. And those who have reprobate minds will oppose God's children to their faces, even as the magicians opposed Moses. In the last days, some people will be living very near to God, but the devil will have his workers too, who will attribute signs and wonders to any power except to the power of Christ. The Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, has never lost his power and never will lose his power. I would hate to say by my actions that I thought the devil had more power than God. There's a wonderful difference between the power of God and any of those other powers. The Holy Spirit only comes in Christ. He only comes into the bodies of those who have who love God. And when he takes possession of us, he takes away into the sweetest experience, the side of heaven, and we are alone with God. He talks to us and reveals to us things to come. John 16, 13. It is wonderful. God puts us under the power and God takes us out. No man can bestow this power upon another. It comes only through Jesus Christ. There are two kinds of power. The, and people who do not know the difference will stand up today and say that Wisdom is foolishness. Many people today have an intellectual faith, historical faith, and they believe, well, the devils who believe and tremble. John 2 19. Belief is one thing, faith is another. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. 2 Corinthians 3 6. If the truth is hidden, it is hidden to those who are lost. We have intellectual imaginations and go through courses of study, learning the doctrines of men. Yet no one but the Holy Spirit can give us a real, abiding, tangible, definite knowledge of the things of God. They are seem foolish to the natural man. Sometimes the Holy Spirit gives a spirit of laughter and sometimes of weeping. And everyone in the place will be affected to, by the Spirit. I have stood before thousands of people who have been unable to speak. I could only weep. When I was able to see, people were weeping everywhere. That is one way the Holy Spirit works. I have stood for an hour with my hand raised, held by the mighty power of God. When I came to myself, I saw people and their faces were shining. God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. He is a God. I worship. Jesus says, here am I and the children you have given me. We believe in signs and wonders, not from beneath, but from above. We are a people to be wondered at. We are to be a sign among the people. The heavens of heavens cannot contain God, yet he tabernacles with men. He comes and dwells in us. His gifts are demonstrated through us so that people may know that God dwells in Zion. Psalm 9-11 We have a bodyguard of angels. The angels of the Lord encamp around us who love God. Psalm 34-7 Our citizenship is in heaven. Philippians 3-20 And we are on our way there. The Holy Spirit works in many ways. People saw the fire on the disciples' heads at Pentecost. They staggered like drunken men. Then the Holy Spirit took possession of their tongues. God Almighty spoke through 120 of his children, and they told of his wonderful works. They did not know what they were saying, but every man in that multitude in Jerusalem heard them speak in his own native language. Acts 2, 1-13. I'm glad God does the same thing today. 
People who are not saved hate the power of God. The cold, dead formalities cannot understand the power of God. It is foolishness to them. They think people are excited, hypnotized, or have lost their minds. May God have mercy upon us if we do not know God's power from hypnotic power or the devil's power. If any man speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will never be forgiven him. To attribute the work of the Holy Spirit to the devil or to any unclean spirit cannot be forgiven. That is the unpardonable sin. Some people are calling the work of the Holy Spirit the work of the devil, and they had better beware. There are different kinds of spirits and different kinds of power, and the natural man cannot understand the work of the Holy Spirit. Shining faces, singing, shouting as one to make one sound, sometimes staggering and falling, drunken but not with wine, sometimes speaking with other tongues. Praise God, some of the redeemed are getting on and filled, so filled with the Holy Spirit that he's singing songs to them that none but the redeemed can sing. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Paul told us that the spirit will work in you in one way and in someone else another way. You know it is the same spirit who's working and you do not get jealous when the other person is blessed. No matter how the spirit works, every member of the body benefits. 1 Corinthians 12 through 1, 12, 1 through 7. People look on these things. They see us lifting up holy hands to God, for example, and they don't like it. They're so dead they cannot get their hands up. Paul said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. The psalmist said, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Psalm 47, 1. People go to the theater and clap their hands, but when we get our grave clothes off and begin to clap our hands, they think it is an awful thing. David danced with all his might before the ark of the Lord, and sometimes the Spirit of God gets into our feet and makes them like hinds feet. David said, by my God, I will leap over a wall. How much more will he enable us in these last days? When we're getting ready for the flight in the air, we must get a good supply of this power. The same power that took Jesus up to heaven will take us up one day. We want more of it, don't we? More of this mighty power. No matter what people say, that it is foolishness, hypnotism, and every other thing, that doesn't make it so. And the Spirit will take us out into the deep things even the deep things of God.